Good evening. Many of us that do video astronomy uh, engage in what Jack Huerkamp refers to as on-the-fly imaging. In other words, we're in a live setting. We're sitting there. We've got images streaming from our telescopes through our cameras into our computer in real time. That's not to say it's within a second or five seconds. That just means we're not doing any processing after the fact. We're just letting it develop on screen while we're sharing it with others or sharing it with ourselves. There are times, however, when that process shows something that makes you a little bit curious as to what might be there or what more might be there. The intent of this video is to supplement Jack's earlier video and talk about another way to, in just a few mouse clicks, take a quick snapshot to get a more detailed view of what you have on your screen at that time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an image that I've captured already. And this is an image of the Running Man Nebula that I use the Malincam DS432C uh, camera in my 10-inch Ritchie Cretion at f5.2. Now this image is the running man, but he's running up into space. Or as somebody pointed out, he's got his cape back here and he's actually flying. <clears throat> Either way, it's kind of confusing. So let's imagine for a moment, since this image was snapped right off the screen as I was looking at the running man the other night, Let's imagine that this is a that this is a stack of frames just building live as every 15 seconds passes. Now, we see some good detail. We see the running man, we see some color. We see a little bit of cloudy detail. We see what might be some kind of a nodule coming up here from the right. But we're still looking at an upside down image. And we'd really like to know more about what's going on here. So, because we're imagining that this is a building stack, let's take a snapshot of it. In Malincam Sky, we just click the snap button, boom, and we suddenly have a new tab at the top. And that tab, it might be called image one, image two, image three, whatever. But if we click on it, suddenly we're looking at a snapshot, a capture of what is going on live on your screen. Once that's done, <clears throat> excuse me, this opens up a whole new world of options within Malincam Sky because Malincam Sky has built-in functionality to do some pretty fun, pretty detailed image processing. Certainly is a professional grade Photoshop? No. But can it do some pretty cool stuff? Absolutely. So we've snapped our picture, but we want to see what's lurking in the depths. What kind of data did we gather that's not jumping out to the naked eye? So the first thing that we might do, is we might come up here to our image and let's rotate it. So real quick, boom, we're going to rotate 90 degrees. Now he's running uphill. He's got his cape flying out the back, but boy, he's flying. Now, we can scroll out so we can see the entire, entire picture, but we also can scroll way in. And if you notice, so we've got nice round stars, but even at a thousand percent, the DS432C has very little noise given <clears throat> the, uh, given the fact that we have a bunch of stacked frames here. So, given that there's low noise, we're going to leverage that. And we're going to adjust our image, and we're going to use what are called curves. Now, many of you have heard about curves. Basically, if you can imagine, you can't see it here, but if you can imagine there's a distribution, there's a histogram down here of luminance or brightness, reds, greens, or blues, you decide what you want to be working with. And then by clicking and dragging on various points on this curve, it applies a cubic spline model to 
get a better representation of what you tell the computer you want to see. So real quick, I want to brighten this up a bit and see what lurks in the shadows. So you click in the center and you drag it up. Now, I'm going to be really extreme. You don't want to do this in a live setting because, whoa, well, you washed it out. I wanted to illustrate that, though. Let's bring it down a little bit. And now you're starting to see that, well, okay, you've got a, you got a nodule coming up here. But that nodule is actually coming out of what looks like another cloud bank of gas and dust. So you might say the background's a little washed out. Just like you go to the dark point on a histogram on the left side, or black point, sorry, you can go to the lower left here. You grab, you drag it to the right, boom. You just adjusted effectively the black point of your image. Now that looks like a lot more detail than what we had before. Now if you wanted, you can play around with different things and end up with some pretty wonky looking images and models. And <clears throat> let's say you did this and you went, oh my gosh, this looks terrible. Well, you just put your cursor on that box, on that drag point that you were using. You right click and it undoes what you just did. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to apply this. Now, many times when you increase brightness or luminance, I should say, using these kinds of tools, you introduce a little more noise, and you also can introduce bloating of stars. Now, there are other approaches to brightening or increasing your luminance within the Malacam Sky tools, but from what I've seen, if you use the, uh, if you use the uh, curves, you get less star bloating than if, for instance, you adjusted the histogram within the range setting. So we're here. Let's get rid of some of this noise because we really want people to see this. And let's say it's on an 80 inch screen because we're in a big public showing. So now we're going to go to processing the image. We're going to denoise and there's multiple ways to go at it. You have a little more control in the bilateral filter. The non-local means uh, you have a little bit of control as well. But uh, if you just want real quick one snap one click of your mouse, boom, your, your Wiener filter, Viner filter, however it's pronounced, you see how all that noise disappeared. And then if we back out, the image itself still looks pretty good, but imagine that this is blown up onto a 80 inch screen or a 50 inch screen. It's nice to have a silky smooth background like that. Now, let's say that you we're going the other way. And in fact, you wanted more detail and you weren't so worried about having a nice smooth background. Well, you can sharpen it. Now there's different ways to go after sharpening. The unsharp mask is the quickest one. And what comes in as your defaults, you can tell it by adjusting this radius and adjusting the amount and the threshold you see how different things are happening here. You do too small of a threshold, it means everything gets sharpened and you get black rings and you get some just garish, nasty stuff. As your threshold moves way out, it didn't look like it did hardly anything. So you as the user are gonna find a balance that works for you. You set your threshold, you decide on your amounts, you decide how many pixels or how wide you're going to be impacting with this sharpness and then you click OK and there you have it. So what you just did is you just added some sharpness. Granted we just removed noise and now we're adding sharpness. Adding sharpness can introduce noise. In this case it didn't because we weren't very aggressive with the sharpness. Now let's say hypothetically you did that and you ended up with you ended up clicking OK and it is not what you want it. The tab here at the bottom left, undo redo, you can go back to wherever you want it in your workflow and start over from that point. Let's say that I, I realized my curve adjustment was just too aggressive. 
Well, I can go back before the curve adjustment. No, nope, the curve adjustment was cool. The denoise was good too. I didn't like how the sharpening works. So I'm going to go back and start from the point where I said, let's denoise this thing. And so I de just went back and I'm going to go back to sharpen again, do the unsharp mask. I'm going to set a slightly bigger radius. I'm going to set my threshold. I'm going to set my amount. And so it didn't do a whole lot to it, but you can see there's a little bit of difference in the pixelation in the stars compared to what was there before. So what this has done in just a matter of minutes, you've gone through open, rotate, adjust your denoise or desharpen, whichever you want to do. So basically four mouse clicks and a few drags. And you just went from this to this. So when, as you're working with somebody and you've got an image building in your stacks as your, as your system runs, you can be showing people an enhancement of what you've got right there. And then when you're done, if you want to save it, you can file, save as, and we can save it as MC Sky 2 or whatever it is that we want to do. Now, when you save files, you know, you can choose whatever type you want. You get more detail when you save them out as a BMP, a PNG, or a TIFF file compared to a JPEG. But JPEGs upload a lot easier into the software or into websites like uh, um, Flickr and stuff like that. So there you have it. And uh, I hope this quick little tutorial is helpful.